As ridership on the Expo line continued to increase, the Mark 1s, which were pushing 15 years of service at this point, were struggling to handle the demand. There was also the prospect of a new Skytrain line, dubbed Rapid Transit 2000, being built along Logie Highway in Northern Burnaby. At the same time as this, BC Transit's operations in Metro Vancouver was switched to the newly created TransLink in April 1998, and officially started operations in April 1999. So a new Skytrain car was necessary to not only assist the Mark 1s, but become the new flagships of the system. In 1997, Bombardier, who recently acquired SNC-Lavalin and UTDC the same year, was assigned to build the new cars, which were called the Mark IIs. The Mark IIs have already started service in Malaysia on Kuala Lumpur's Rapid Trans system, which opened in 1998. TransLink ordered 30 Mark II train sets, or 60 cars, numbered 201 to 260, with 50 cars being built in Burnaby and 10 in Kingston, Ontario. The first Mark II train sets were completed in March 2000 for testing on the system, which is something to look into. The Mark IIs were originally not supposed to feature air conditioning, but the province spent $1.5 million, or $250,000 per car, to have the AC installed in the units anyway. Construction for the cars cost $160 million overall, or $2.57 million per car, and in March 2000, the first full shell was completed in Kingston, Ontario, where testing was inaugurated in November. When all of the cars were complete, they were mostly assigned to the Millennium line in two car sets, or just a single train set, but with some on Expo line service to assist the Mark 1s. But later in 2009, like their older counterparts, the trains were lengthened, this time to four cars, or two train sets for the Expo line. The trains were originally going to start service in early 2001, but the trains suffered from early teething problems during testing, which contained various glitches and technical problems. Some of these include a similar issue with the Mark 1 surrounding its doors, and also lighting problems inside the cars, which delayed their introduction from early 2001 to October 2001, and then again to 2002. Unfortunately, during this time, the Mark 2s received negative feedback from CTV News, which made claims about the cars not fitting the tracks, not being powerful, properly and the doors having to be resized to fit the stations. All of these claims were proven false by TransLink and Rapid Transit 2000. John Doyle, a spokesperson for the project, stated, There are many anti-Skytrain types, and they never stop cementing these stories. Ah, NIMBYs. Don't ever change. By the way, this isn't the last time the Mark IIs will rifle feathers with people. Oh, no, 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 no. We're only getting started. By August 2002, the Mark IIs were ready for service, perfectly timing its introduction to the opening of the remainder of the Millennium Line to Commercial Broadway on August 31st. 
the Mark II's differentiated themselves massively to their predecessors. The Mark II's were just under 18 meters in length and just under 3 meters in width. The cars weighed 21 and a half tons and were powered by free Toshiba IGBT WVF traction motors, which, well, here are a few samples. were the first cars to have an articulated joint in their design, which were replaced in 2016 due to wear and tear. They were also more technologically advanced than the Mark 1s, using an upgraded version of the Mark 1's ITCS technology, called the Advanced Rapid Transit System, or ART, as well as AC traction motors. They were also the first cars to feature the captain's seat, a seat at the very front of the train offering the best view of the surrounding infrastructure. The Mark 1 sort of had this feature, except it was actually two seats instead of one. But honestly, who would use this bench as two seats? Yeah. No. As I thought. The original Mark IIs were all painted in the sweep livery, the same color scheme as the 1995 Mark Ones with a white base and blue and yellow sweeps along the sides. All 60 units still wear the sweep colors as of 2023, and are actually the only full set of Skytrain cars to wear the livery. Well, okay, the Mark IIs don't seem too bad so far. I don't understand why these trains are so controversial with the public. It isn't like these trains are loud or anything like that. Holy sh! I'm surprised that no one lost their hearing or went deaf because of the screaming Mark II trains. But seriously, not even the diesel engines on the much bigger West Coast Express locos are like this. I can hear these traction motors from kilometers away, these trains are so loud. Besides the early technical issues and, well, this, the Mark IIs have operated somewhat reliably on the system's tracks, and acted as the flagship of the early 2000s TransLink fleet. They were seen on both the Expo and Millennium lines with the Mark Ones, but appeared less often on the Expo in 2009 when, well, we'll get to them were still a common sight on the Expo line until around 2016, when the Evergreen extension opened on December 2nd, the majority of the original Mark II fleet were moved to the Millennium line full time, with the units rare to come by on the Expo line. The Mark IIs were equipped with TransLink's Wi-Fi system in 2022, as well as the aforementioned articulated joint upgrades in 2016. Despite these upgrades, the cars are still aging. Well, yeah, that's completely obvious and the retirement process has just been revealed recently. The first Gen Mark IIs will be phased out sometime in the early 2030s, only two years after the last Mark Ones were set to be phased out by the way, and replaced with the Mark V. Regardless, the original Mark IIs have served the region well, and will continue to serve it for at least another decade. That's it. Well, that's a pretty short episode.
on to the next one, I guess. Wait, why isn't it ending? By 2006, the Mark IIs have run successfully for six years, and ridership was rising throughout the network, especially on the Expo line. The Millennium line just opened its current terminus, for now, BCC Clark during this time. The city of Vancouver was announced to be the host city of the 2010 Olympics, and the Canada line was under construction, which was problematic, very problematic, but still in progress, and slated to open sometime in 2009. As a result of these factors, more capacity was needed for the Expo line once again, and a contract was awarded to Bombardier to build more Mark II cars. TransLink ordered 38 units with an option of 34 more, numbered 301 to 348, all built in Mexico. The first units were intended to start service in early 2009, but were delayed to July for unknown reasons. The remaining 14 units were delivered and started service in 2010. Although these trains look nearly identical, there were several differences between the 2000 Mark IIs and the new Mark IIs. The new Mark II trains have a different seating arrangement compared to the 2001 units, and have additional features for standing passengers, such as grab bars on the ceiling. This was to maximize capacity on the Expo line during peak periods. The new units also improved accessibility and security for passengers with CCTV cameras, LED maps, interior door indicator lights, and an LED screen installed on the front end. Like the older Mark IIs, the trains were later equipped with Wi-Fi in 2022 to further improve the service quality on the Expo line. The new Mark IIs still retained the art system, but featured different traction motors, this time Bombardier MyTrack IGPT VWFs, which made deeper sounds compared to the 2001 units. The 2009 Mark IIs were also the first Skytrain cars to be painted in the charcoal sweep livery. Unlike their older sisters, the 2009 Mark IIs have been operating reliably on the Expo line for most of their lives, and don't make as much noise. However, over time, some units have issues with their destination screens and interior displays not working. The 2009 Mark IIs did have a problem though. They completely broke the naming system of the trains. When TransLink announced the Mark V in 2021, there was a bit of confusion when there was no official Mark IV train. According to TransLink themselves, the reason for this is because of the organization and ease and maintenance of the cars, which does make sense. The Mark I's are mostly numbered in the 100's range, and so are the original Mark II's in the 200's range. Fine then. So the 2009 Mark II's are in the 300's range. Okay then, so they should be classified as Mark III's, right? <laughs> no, 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 they're not. They're classified as Mark II second generation cars. Shit. The Mark III's are numbered in the 400s range, but not officially classified as Mark IVs, which is why there is no Mark IVs, which means Translix's attempt of synergy didn't really work at all. And it's because of the 2009 cars. They broke the system. For now, the 2009 Mark II classification still exists, but most rail fans call these cars the Mark II and a half, or 2.5, because they bridged the gap between the original Mark IIs and the brand new Mark III's, which would debut in 2015. But we'll get to them later on. Nevertheless, the 2009 Mark IIs, second generation Mark IIs, or Mark II and a halves, or whatever you call them, can be seen operating consistently on the Expo line assisting the Mark I with rush hour service and becoming the new flagships of the system, with a relatively squeaky clean career. Oh. Oh, right. Never mind. Despite numerous early and unfortunate hiccups, the Mark IIs, both versions, have made an impact on the network due to their reliability, 
capacity, and new features and will forever play a part in the history of TransLink and the SkyTrain network, and will continue to play a part in it for many years to come.